This is in the introduction to his book. We're more exposed to images of sex than ever in our world today. Yet, ironically, per perhaps because of this, we are more out of touch with its deeper meaning. We've been trained by our culture to look at sex, but not to look through it. And that's in the context of talking about, I'd love for you to unpack this, Bill. Mm -hmm. What do we mean by <clears throat> iconography? He, he's saying sex is an icon here. An icon of what and in what way? What do we mean by the iconography of the human body or the iconography of, of sexual love? What do we mean? Yeah, that the God communicates himself to us through signs, wonders, physical things, objects. So when we look at reality, when we see things from sun and moon to land and sea to male and female, we ask the question like, what is this saying? What truth is it speaking? That's the sacramental lens. Right. That's you the know, sacramental welcome lens. Welcome to the show. That's right. the sacramental lens. Right. Now. So when I look at, you know, man gets down on bended knee, proposes to beloved. They marry. The two become one. What is it saying here about the artist, the God who made it? So to see the icon is to be, it's like reading the language or logos of God. So if we just look at the icon of sexual love without seeing through it that it points beyond we stop here it's kind of like a religious icon itself like an icon of christ which he actually refers to mm -hmm. in the introduction if we just worship if we worship the, that icon is meant to point us to the true object object of worship but if we end up stopping at the icon and worshiping the paint and the wood it's well, idolatry. The icon has become it's an idolatry. Idol. It's right. idolatry, and this is where we get stuck in the in the physiological world of just an obsession with sex and the body. It's called an epiphenomenalism, right? It's it's just skin deep, literally. And so, whatever gives me the tingles or gives me a sort of ecstatic moment or release, that that becomes my. I I stop there. So he is That's clearly enough. critiquing this. Listen to this. He says. Right. He says, for many, sex has been reduced to nothing more than the raw physical act, meat on meat and nothing more. Right? So he is totally <laughs> against that He's calling out the idolatry of sex of our age, yeah. But this is what he's being accused of by his critics, that he himself is guilty of this idolatry. And we need to unpack that. We will. Mm -hmm. Listen to this, what he says. Our goal in this book is to restore the icon. We're out to wipe the dust off and let the vibrant colors beneath shine brilliantly once more. Then he says, and it's a great analogy, he says, restoration can take some work, as any art enthusiast will tell you, but it's worth it when you uncover the treasure and see the craft of the artist clearly again. That's his goal in this book. It's beautiful. Is to help us give, help to give the reader this vision of of what is underneath all the 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 dirt and crud that has been caked over our understanding of sexuality later he says this i love this quote uh, this is from page 47 he says the devil loves to throw dirt on the shiniest diamonds to conceal the glory they're meant to display all right i'm only four chapters into this book but i am utterly convinced that this man, Josh Butler, his heart, his goal, his end game, the very purpose for writing this book mm -hmm. is to help our culture, which has been so distorted by this twisted pornographic vision of the body. Yeah. He's saying there's another way to see. There's another way to think. There's another way to experience the body and sexuality. And he's saying it to Christians who themselves have been so warped by this pornographic vision that they they can't see the beauty and the goodness that Josh Butler is trying to reveal. Yeah. So they're accusing him of the very same perversion of of that that actually is filtering mm -hmm. is the filter through which they're mm -hmm. seeing sex. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm not saying this to scold or condemn. I'm I'm saying it to invite a deeper look at the human body and human sexuality. Uh, I think it's summed up very well by St. Paul. I think this is his letter to Titus, uh, one of his letters. There's more than one letter to Titus. I think there's two, yeah. 
Tim Three. Tim Ty. Uh, I think there's one letter to Tice. Anyway, okay. we're revealing our Catholicity. We don't know our <laughs> Bible books by heart, right? But in his letter to Titus, St. Paul says, to the pure, all things are pure, right? To the impure, nothing is pure. Right. What does that mean? To the pure, all things are pure. It means, plain and simply, the devil doesn't have his own clay. Mm -hmm. God looked at everything he made and and gee who who made sexual union who made us male and female and called the two to become one right. flesh do not i beg the world i beg everyone do not give the devil his own clay here right, right? this clay belongs to god and we are made male and female and the two are called to become one flesh for a holy sacred purpose meaning to that point we should be gazing upon sexual union prudently in a holistic way to see it as the icon that lifts us up. And what you just read there, Christopher, it clearly shows like we it's I had this image of Jacob's ladder and like the ladder has fallen on. We're just in a horizontal plane and we're just seeing it as a physiological epiphenomenal, just sex, sex, meat on meat. What he seems to be doing is lifting the ladder up. So actually, look at sex. Look at this, but look where look where it's going. It's Jacob's ladder going up, and yeah, and through yeah, the yeah. sign, God's coming down. So it's not a distraction. This is why John Paul II said, as a young priest, "I fell in love with human love." Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't just mean the handshake or the hug. He's talking about the mystery of the one flesh union. Yeah. He fell in love with it because he saw it as Jacob's ladder going up. This is a great service to people that if they would be attentive to and follow him through it. Thank you.